Hi everyone, it's me, Spring the Fiber Enthusiast, and welcome to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to be on this summer tea, or it could be a cover-up, something like that. It is a square neckline, two panels put together. The sides of them, when we put them together, is what makes it even more different. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Let's go ahead and jump on into it and get started. Okay, so to make this top, we need to make two panels. And here is the first panel. And I'm gonna show you how to work it up by working the second panel. And basically what we have is we have a chain, which is half of the circumference of where you would like your top to sit. So, when I've explained in the past how to measure yourself for crocheting a sweater or jumper, um, you can do it in the round, you can do it, you know, in panels, it's up to you. But for this top, we're doing it in panels. And basically what I do is I take the circumference. Now this is in cotton. I take the circumference of where I want my shirt to be, where I want the bottom of the shirt to be. And I take that and I divide it by two. And then I'll add a couple inches to that number to give me some ease, some positive ease. So it's just, it's not negative ease where when you put it on, it stretches. It's positive ease so that way it hangs just like this. That's the goal. So that is way, that's the way that I measure when I'm working, you know, and planning to make a top. All right, so let's go ahead and get started talking about how this works up. So we work up a chain and you don't want your chain to be too tight. You might go up a hook size. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook for the whole pattern. You may want to use a six or a 6.5 to do your chain if you have a very, very tight chain when you chain for stuff. You can also do a single crochet foundation row and it's in multiples of six if you do that. So you can go ahead and get started if you so choose. For my project here, for both panels, we will be chaining for an extra large. Now remember, not all extra larges are the same. I know I can go try on extra large shirts and they all vary. They all are different. There is no two that are the same. Um, for whatever reason, no matter where I go, they're not the same. So this is an extra large for me and I measured the panel. The panel is 24 inches wide. What you measure is totally different than what I measure. And we chain 78 plus one if you're gonna work from a chain. So this is Dawn Erin Loving Hands Creations. And it was Colorway Mystic Skies, hand dyed 97 percent cotton, 3% metallic polyester. And it has a weight of 100, a weight of <laughs> three ounces, and it's 153 yards. It is a medium worsted. So if you're gonna crochet along with me, a 5.5 uh, is suggested for the medium worsted. It's up to you as to how you choose to do it. Now, I did have four hanks. I caked up all four hanks. And for the first panel, I still have this much left over from the second hank. So that is because I'm short in the waist. Some people have a longer waist and some people have a shorter waist. So the height of your pattern repeats is going to be completely up to you as to how tall you need it, but I'm going to go through and show you how to work this up. 
All right. With all of that being said, if you're following along with me and you want to make this extra large that the panel is 24 inches wide, you will chain 78 plus one. That one is your turning chain. And then you're going to single crochet into the second chain from your hook. Then you're going to place one single crochet in the remaining 77 chains. Now I'm using the back hump, the back part of the stitch, and that way I have a nice clean edge right here. So just one single crochet all the way across, so that way you have a total of 78 single crochets. Now I'm gonna go ahead and chain my 78 plus one and I'll come back and show you what to do next. If you want to do a single crochet foundation row, you are more than welcome to do so. Just do it in multiples of six. Now for those of us that have chained our chain and our plus one, we're gonna be working into that second stitch from your hook, the second chain from your hook. So this is just the loop on your hook getting ready to work into something. Then we have chain one and chain two. And I'm gonna turn it over so we're working into those back bumps. These back bumps on the chain. And what that'll do, it will give us a nice, clean, finished edge. And it gives a little bit more elasticity. So we're not going to go into this first one. We're going to go into the second one and single crochet. And at this time, putting a stitch marker right here would be very beneficial to keep up with your ends. So I have a stitch marker. I'm just going to place in that very first stitch so it does not get lost. Now I'm just gonna place one single crochet in each of the remaining chains. And we're gonna just work a single crochet row. All right, I'm gonna work on mine and when I get done, you should have, if you're following along with me, you should have a total of 78 single crochets when you're done and I'll meet up with you at the other end. Okay, once you have your row of 78, this is our foundation, the bottom of it, we're going to begin our base row. So we have to do a start row, and then you will do row two and three as you're repeating rows. So this row here is just a, just a foundation, just to give you something nice to work from. Now we're gonna do our base row here. And what we're gonna do is, I do a mock double crochet to start. If you want to chain two or three for your double crochet part of your start, that's perfectly okay. Um, I'm gonna turn my work. My loop's on the wrong side here, here we go. I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna draw up a loop to the height of a double crochet. Place my finger on that loop on my hook, wrap it around my hook, and insert my hook into that same stitch, that very last single crochet we made, and yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I'm gonna yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. That's my first double crochet. And I'm gonna place a stitch marker at the top of that double crochet. Now we need to chain three. So depending on whether you chained two for your starting double crochet or three, would depend on how many chains you need to chain to start. So I'm, gonna, I'm kinda going through this slow to start with for those that would rather chain up. So if you chain up two for your double crochet as a general rule for yourself, then you would chain a total of five. 
to for your first double crochet and then the chain three that you need. If you do a chain three for your double crochet, you would you would chain six. So it would be three chains for your double crochet and then chain three more for the next step. So that's why I'm going slow with this because I start things differently. I start things with this mock double crochet. You don't have to do it, but it's an option if, if you do. All right, so now I have that double crochet done. I have my stitch marker there and we're gonna move on. I'm gonna chain one, two, three, because that is the next step. We're gonna skip one, two, and into the next stitch, we're gonna single crochet. Now we're gonna chain one, two, three, skip two, one, two, and double crochet into the next. Let's repeat. Chain one, two, three, skip two, one, two, single crochet into the next. Chain one, two, and three, skip two, one, two, and double crochet into the following. That's your repeat to the end of the row. And here's what you have. So we have a double crochet at the beginning, chain three, skip two, place a single crochet. That's your beginning, then chain three, skip two and double crochet into the next and then start repeating all right i will meet up with you at the end of the row all right so we're coming down here to the end we're going to do our last chain one two three and double crochet into that very last stitch okay now our base rows are done we have our single crochet foundation. We have our row one, which is our base row. Now we're gonna move on to row two. Row two, we're gonna start with a mock double crochet or whatever you so choose. So I'm gonna do a mock double crochet back into that same stitch and place my stitch marker. So that way I know that is my last stitch. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna go right into this next chain space here, right next to it and place a double crochet. So we now have two double crochets to start our row. Now we need to chain one, two, and three. And we're gonna put a double crochet all the way over here next to your next double crochet into the chain space. So just like we have here into the chain space, we're gonna hop over that single crochet and all the way over here, we're gonna place a double crochet. Like that. Now you're gonna place a double crochet into that stitch, the double crochet stitch from the row below. And now we're gonna repeat, place a double crochet into the chain space. Chain one, two, three. Skip your single crochet and we're gonna do the double crochet into the next chain space. Double crochet into the next stitch. And double crochet into the next chain three space. And repeat. So what we're doing is we're putting double crochets into the chain three space and a double crochet on top of the stitch, the double crochet stitch. 
And we're gonna work that all the way to the end of the row. Chain one, two, three. Double crochet into the next chain space. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next chain space and repeat. So that's all there is to row one. And I'll meet back up with you when we get to the end. We're going to finish the same way we started. All right, so here I am coming up to the very end. This is my last chain three. I'm going to place a double crochet into that last chain space. So one double crochet. And then I'm going to pull my stitch marker off and place a double crochet into that last stitch. That is row two, and it is your repeating row two. Now we're going to do row three. Row three starts off with either a chain or a mock double. So I'm going to do a mock double crochet back into that same stitch. Replace my stitch marker back on that very first stitch. There we go. Then we're gonna chain three, one, two, and three, and single crochet to this very first chain space. We're basically repeating the row one, the style of row one, where we skip two and either single or double crocheted. We're repeating that, but we're repeating it instead of on a single crochet row, we're repeating it as part of the pattern now. So you'll notice that there's some similarities between this and what we're doing now. All right, so now we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to skip over that first double crochet and we're going to place it a double crochet into the center double crochet stitch of that group of three. So if you look, we have that very first V here, and then now we have this one. So you can kind of see where we're going. Now we're going to chain three, just repeat, chain one, two, three, and single crochet to the chain space. Chain one, two, three. Skip your first double crochet and double crochet into the next. So the top of the next stitch. So there you have it. That's just our repeat to the end of the row where I will meet back up with you. Just chain one, two, three single crochet to the chain space, chain one, two, three, double crochet to that center stitch, that center double crochet, chain one, two, three, single crochet to the chain space, and so on. Just continue that same repeat. I'll meet up with you at the end of the row. All right, to finish this row, we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, our last one. Remove the stitch marker and double crochet into that very last stitch. There we go. Do four more repeats of rows two and three, and I'll meet back up with you for the next part. All right, so I've completed my amount of repeats. Now, for those of you that want to count the amount of rows I have total right here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen total rows as of this point. All right, now we're going to switch it up and change the pattern a little bit for a few rows. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. And this row is pretty simple. We're just going to place a single crochet back into that very first stitch. 
and we're going to place a single crochet into your next stitch and three single crochets into your chain three space one single crochet into each of the next three stitches this is your repeat you're just placing one single crochet in every stitch all the way to the end that includes the three chains each of those chains is considered a stitch so that's one single crochet two single crochet three single crochet around that chain three and that takes care of your chain and then you simply put one in each of the next three stitches and we're going to do this all the way to the end of the row we're making just a single crochet row i'll meet up with you at the end all right, so I've made it to the end of my row. I'm just going to chain one and turn my work over. I'm going to place a single crochet back into that same stitch and replace my stitch marker. Now I'm going to chain one, skip one, and single crochet into the next. That's your repeat to the end of the row. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. Go ahead and continue that all the way to the end of the row and I'll meet up with you down there. All right, so once we've made it to the end, you should have ended with a single crochet in your, in your very last stitch. You're gonna chain one and turn your work. And now we're gonna do one more row and then we'll go back to the previous pattern. So we're gonna place a single crochet back into this very first stitch. Okay, then we're gonna chain one and we're gonna place a single crochet into that chain one space. Now I'm gonna put my stitch marker back on that very first stitch just so that way I can locate it. go now our repeat is to chain one and single crochet into the chain one space so skip your single crochets and go into the chain one space chain one skip the single crochet and go into the space and single crochet chain one skip the single crochet Go into the chain one space and single crochet. And you're going to repeat that all the way to the end where I'm going to meet back up with you. All right, so here I am coming down to the end. I'm going to remove my stitch marker. I have my chain one and I'm going to single crochet to that last stitch. All right, so now we're going to turn our work over and take a look at something here. Did it go in the right way? We're gonna start back on the pattern we was doing prior. We're going to be gauging, just looking down below and gauging a little bit on our placement of this row of stitches. So we're gonna start with either your, your starting chain or your mock double crochet. Let's go ahead and get that set up so we are ready. And we're going to chain three. There we are. After that, after your starting double crochet chain or mock double crochet. So we need to chain one, two, and three. Now, the first thing we need to do <clears throat> is basically we're working like the row one of that pattern all right so we know that it's a single crochet 
Let me separate this out so you can see it better. So we have single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and so on, all the way to the bottom. And then if you look next to it, you have three double crochets, one double crochet, three double crochets, one double crochet, and so on, all the way to the bottom. And then you're back to single crochets straight down. So that's what you're looking at when you're placing the next row of stitches. So we're going to find the center here, like this chain three that we worked over. We're going to go and find the center of it and place a single crochet. Now it may be in a chain space for you and or it may be in a single crochet. All right, now we're going to chain one, two, three, and we need to work the double crochet. So that double crochet is going to be straight up from that center double crochet from four rows below. So right here, which happens to be in a chain one space for me. Now I'm going to chain one, two, three, and the next is a single crochet. So I'm going to look down below and go center, keep everything aligned, place a single crochet. Chain one, two, three, and now a double crochet. So I can see right here, it's also going to be into a chain one space. We go. So we're just doing the row one of our pattern from down here. We're getting it set up, that base row, we're getting it set up, and we're just following the same thing that we had prior down here. So go ahead and work across your pattern. And I'm going to meet up with you down here at the end to show you how to finish off this row and then uh, we'll move on from there. Okay, so we're coming down here to the end. We have our last chain three, and we're going to double crochet into the last stitch. Okay, so now we're on repeat. We're gonna repeat this pattern up here exactly the same. So we have down here a total repeat of one, two, three, four, five and a half repeats. You will continue on with that, do five and a half repeats, and then we're going to do this again. Okay, so just a quick reminder, refresher, is we have, if you count this as your first row, your base row, then this is your first repeating row, which is row two, and then row three which is your second repeating row, we have one, two, three, four, five, and then half of a repeating row. So that's row two to complete this next part. So then we start with our single crochets and single crochet chain one, skip one rows. So now we need to chain one and turn our work at this point. And we're just placing a single crochet back into that first stitch, as well as one single crochet in every stitch. So you have a chain three. So we would do three single crochets into the chain three space and then one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And you're gonna repeat that all the way to the end where we chain one and turn our work. All right, now once we've got to the end, we chain one, we turn our work. We're gonna single crochet back into that same stitch chain one, skip one, and single crochet into the next. And that is your repeat to the end. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. 
and you're going to carry that on all the way to the end. All right, now once you've made it to the end of that row, we're going to chain one and turn our work. Single crochet back into that same space, chain one, and single crochet into the chain one space. Chain one and single crochet into the next chain one space, and that's your repeat all the way to the end. Chain one and skip single crochet single crochet into the chain one space. I'll meet up with you at the end. All right, once you've completed that last single crochet and chain one row, we're going to talk about if you need to continue on because this is too short for you, just simply work up another section just like you did all the way through to the single crochet rows. You want to end with the last single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet. And what that's doing is giving you some structure within all of the lace. Give, give a little change of design there. So, um, so it's up to you as to how long you want your panel. You can make this really long. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. But for just the shirt that I'm making, the tee that I'm making, I'm stopping with two of these sections. And then I'm going to begin just this uh, lace area for the shoulders. And I'll bring this over so you can see. So we're just doing the lace area for the shoulders. Now, how far you want to come in towards your neck is up to you. I'm doing it the same on both uh, sides. The way this is designed is to be square neck. So square in the front and the back as well. Okay, so for that, it is up to you as to how far in you want to go. If you need to come in more um, because you have thinner uh, shoulders or something like that, you can do so. Basically, what I do is I fold it in half. Fold the fabric in half. And I place the folded point at the center of my, you know, neck, uh, collar, between the collarbones, just right there on the sternum in between the shoulders. So that's the halfway point. Then I look at it and I see the distance to where I want it to sit on top of my shoulders. And that's where I place my stitch marker and then I begin doing my shoulder pieces. For mine, I did the lace work one, let's see, one, two, three, four repeats on each side. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way. I'm gonna bring this one back over and turn my work over. And we're gonna begin with a mock double crochet just as we did for the other sections. And then chain three, one, two, three, and now we're going to do just like we did below. When we jumped into our base row to start the second part, we have these chain one spaces and single crochets and all of that. So we're what we're doing is we're looking below. And that is cent center of this area here below. 
So that's going to match up and we're going to go chain one, two, three. And the same thing here. We have these three double crochets down here. We need to match up placing a double crochet above that center one. To the best of your ability. All right, so then we're gonna repeat that three more times. Chain one, two, three. Now I know it's in the single crochet. I can just place it in the single crochet. Chain one, two, three. Jump over and double crochet over the top of that center double crochet, which is in a chain space. One, two, three. Single crochet. One, two, three. Double crochet. One more, one, two, three. Single crochet, one, two, three. Double crochet. So that is the beginning of the shoulder piece. So now what I'm gonna do is just turn my work over and continue that pattern for the height you desire. The pattern that we've been working on, the lace pattern. Now for mine, I have my base row and then I did one, two and a half repeats. So we just did the base row. I'm gonna work two and a half repeats for the first side and then I'll go over and start from the outside and work in and do the same thing. I'll work my base row and then I'll work two and a half repeats. One, two and a half. Okay, so now that we have both panels done, our shoulder pieces on both are done, we're gonna match them up. Placing one on top of the other here match them up. Now I did not cut away from my very last stitch on the second panel. You can, you can do whatever you would like to do to finish off that row and then start a new row joining it. Or you can do like I did and leave it and pick up to join. All right, so we're just going to pick up the first panel and draw that loop through, kind of like a slip stitch in a way. So I'm going to find the top of that very last stitch, grab my loop from the last panel, and pull it through. Now I'm going to turn my work. And let's see here. I have double crochet to go into. Okay. So we are going to slip stitch all the way to the other, other side. So here's the next double crochet stitch. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to go into the one on the back panel. Yarn over, pull my loop through, through, and slip stitch. Now we have our three chains. We want to go into those chains one two three because we want to make the top of this sturdy so if i'm going into the chains and you're looking down here i have the top of the stitch not just one strand but two strands from each panel and i'm just going to slip stitch now i'm going to do it loose enough that it will lay flat when we're done. 
So you want it to be able to lay flat. All right, so we're gonna go into the next chain and pick up, it's a little tedious because it's a chain and not an actual like single crochet or double crochet stitch. Okay, there's the first one. Now we're gonna go pick up the second one. are again we're just yarning over and slip stitching I lost that one there we are there we are okay and slip stitch one more chain and then you have your double crochets As I said, the chains might be a little bit fiddly. Only because you're not going under one strand. You're going under both of those strands. You want to make sure that it has structure. Okay, got it. Pull that through and slip stitch. So now I have my three chains and the first two double crochets. Now I'm going to go and do the next three double crochets going all the way through. Slip stitch. All the way through and slip stitch. And you might want to check it occasionally. Just turn it over and make sure that it's going to lay flat. See how those two chains join together like that? Give it a good sound foundation. Uh, for the top of your shoulder versus just like this. So that's why I do that. Now I'm going to continue uh, stitching these two together, just slip stitching them together all the way to the other end. When I reach the other end, I'll meet back up with you and show you what to do next. All right, so once you have slip stitched the two panels all the way across, we're going to pick a side. It does not matter whether you do the one closest to you or the one furthest from you, you're just gonna pick a side. And we're going to clean up the edge by placing single crochets all the way around to the join for the other shoulder. So I'm just gonna chain one, and single crochet back into that last stitch I went into. And mark that with a stitch marker so I know that that is the end of it when I make my way around. Okay? And then you're just going to evenly place single crochets down the side of that shoulder panel here. Just try to evenly place them. We're just cleaning up the edge. Like this. Work our way down. All right, we're coming down here to the end. Now we're at the part where we have our single crochet, chain one, single crochet. We're going to single crochet into the single crochet, single crochet into the chain one. And you're gonna work that all the way to the other, the other side. And then clean up this edge, working all up to the top of that double crochet on your last row. And then join the same way that we joined the other side. 
So we're gonna join all the way to the other end of the other shoulder. And then at that point, you will cut away from your work and we'll have to pick back up for cleaning up the front, the front panel at that point. But you'll just come back and uh, I'll meet back up with you at that point and show you where to join and uh, clean up, how to clean up the front panel. The same as we're doing on the back, it's just we need to rejoin once we get to that point. All right, so once you have made it across the shoulder on this side, down, around, and across the join on the opposite side, you can just flip over your work, cut away, and sew in your ends. I haven't sewn in any ends yet. And then we're just going to pick up, to finish off the neckline, we're just going to pick up with a single crochet into the top here, slip stitch, and then single crochet. And then we're just gonna single crochet all the way around, slip stitching to our very first single crochet. And then sew in your ends. The next step is we're going to be working on joining the sides. Now the sides, how far up you join them is gonna, is going to be determined um, by you as far as where you need to stop for your arm. Now, what I have going on here is some zigzag chaining. We're going to start, let me get my tails out of the way here. We're going to start at the very bottom down here. At the very bottom. And we're going to start working back and forth, zigzag all the way up here to the top. When we get to the top, we're going to jump over and start working all the way back down. So we have these zigzag effect between the two panels. So that's how we're going to be working the two panels. And you're going to join oh, with a slip stitch to the bottom two here or the bottom one here whichever side you want to start on it's okay we're just going to slip stitch to that very first stitch whichever side you so choose i'm just going to run a slip knot on my hook and pull that slip knot through and slip stitch just to ensure it's not going anywhere for now. Okay, so your first chain and the last chain before you turn to come back is directly across from each other. You move that tail out of the way so it doesn't get confusing. So it's directly across. We're gonna go straight over to the other side. We're gonna chain one, two, three. You're gonna pick up the other panel and from the back side, go in, yarn over, pull through and through, just slip stitch. Now you're gonna chain one, two, and three. Now what I want you to do is skip, you're gonna look at your double crochets. We're gonna skip this first one here, this first double crochet, and we're gonna go into the top of it. So the, the post of it, we're, we're gonna skip over. We're going into the top of it. So I'm gonna put my hook into the top, trying to do this where you can see it, and slip stitch to it. Now chain one, two, three. Okay, so we're not gonna go straight across to the other side. We're actually gonna go up one double crochet. So pretend that that row is, is worked right now. So we need to work the next row and go up to the next double crochet, the top of the next double crochet. I'm just going to go under 
that. Okay. And slip stitch to your chain three here. Now we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And once again, look at your double crochet rows. You're going to skip the next one because now we're back over on the right side. We're going to skip this next double crochet and go up to the following one. and slip stitch to it. Again, chain one, two, and three. Now we're on the left side. We're gonna skip the next double crochet and into the top of the next one, we're going to slip stitch. So I'm going to work up to the same amount of rows that I did on the other side. Let's see how many rows we did. So if we start from the very bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's three rows with single crochets, so 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. At the top of the 24th row is where I stopped. And here's my armhole. So just so you have kind of an idea as to where I stopped, I stopped on the 24th row. So let me get this turned back around here. That means I will work up the same way over here. I will work all the way up until I hit the 24th row of double crochets. Continuing to just chain three, one, two, three. Skip this double crochet, go into the next. And slip stitch. Chain one, two, three. Skip the next double crochet and go into the next. Now, once I've reached the top, once I've reached the top, I'll show you what to do next. All right, so I've made it to the last going up. So we worked from the bottom towards the shoulder and I worked to the 24th row. Now that's still at an angle. Let me show you here. That's still at an angle. So what I need to do is chain three and go straight over to the one on the opposite side. So the 24th row on the other panel needs to be chained two. So chain one, two, three, and we're gonna jump directly over. So we're not skipping one, we're going directly across and catching that very first, first one there. Okay, now what you need to do is turn your work to make it easy we're going to turn our work the opposite direction so we have our zigzags here now we're going to go the other way you're going to chain three and we're going to catch those skipped double crochets so chain one two and three and you're going to find on the opposite side the double crochet that was skipped. Let's see if I can get this up here where you can see it better. So here we worked here and here. We need to work into that one. So we're working into the one in between or the skipped. And then chain three, one, two, three. And again, we're gonna go over to the opposite panel, go to the other side. We worked here and here, that means that this is where we need to work 
the next one. So all the all the rows are going to be slip stitch two um, from a chain three. It's just you're going to work every other one on your way up the first trip. And then when you turn it around and work back down, you're going to catch the ones that you skipped. All right. So once again, we're going to jump over here and catch the one that was skipped. Chain one, two, th three. Go to the opposite side. Catch the one that was skipped. And continue working. When you get to the bottom, I'll meet up with you and show you how to finish off this bottom part right here. Okay, so I'm coming down to the, basically the last chain three over to this side. Let's see here. Got it. All right, so <clears throat> that is the last slip stitch right there is back down here to the beginning where we started. Uh, here's our tail. So we're back down at the beginning where we started. We just slip stitched to it and I just pulled it out. <laughs> you can go one more if you would like and chain three and go directly back over to this side and create a nice, in fact, here, we'll do it together. Chain one, two, three, go over to the other side and slip stitch to it. And then that just kind of gives it a little extra structure there. If that's what you so choose. If you want to end here, that's fine. If you want to end over here, that's fine. It does not matter. Then you're just going to slip stitch and cut away from your ball of yarn. Sew in your ends and you are done unless you would like to add some extra edging on it. What have you, it does not matter. It is up to you if you wanna go further with this. This is as far as I am going. And I will sew in my ends, take some pictures and that way you can see in the thumbnail what you'd be making before you started to make it <laughs> all right i hope that you have enjoyed this tea tutorial and that you like the style if you make this i would love to see it and you can send a picture in email you can send a picture on uh, the Facebook group. You can join the Facebook group by answering three easy questions and that's automatic access. You also can tag me on Instagram if you so choose, but I would love to see your work if you make this. All right, everyone, be blessed, be a blessing, and until next time, bye for now.